ABC Online, a ministry of Old Paz Baptist Church in Northfield, Minnesota, and we are coming live to you here. It is 2.04 p.m. Central Time here in Minnesota, and uh, we are going to talk about some crazy things here today. You know, we will pick up our Charismatic series uh, again Uh I don't know when, maybe maybe this weekend, I don't know, or maybe Friday. I'm not sure, but we are definitely going to pick it up again. But uh, I have just been itching to talk about this subject, and uh, I think it's it's so timely to talk about it and understand this, this subject uh, more so than what many do. And, you know... Once you get this and you get the historical significance, you won't be confused and deceived by the devil. There are a ton of people that are confused and deceived by the devil concerning this topic or deceived, you know, and I believe they're saved people. I mean, some of them are just deceived or or, or maybe maybe um, not deceived by the devil. That's that's maybe a little too harsh. Um some that are openly deceived are openly uh, for Satan are deceived by the devil. But I would say some of my brethren uh, are confused about this issue. I'll, I'll say that. That's probably a better way to say it. Because uh, I really don't want to imply that I believe everybody that doesn't, uh, that is wrong about this is, you know, an agent of Satan or something. I'm not saying that. So I, I want to be clear about that. But, um, you know, this topic is, it's important to understand because deception is here. And Jesus foretold about all these things. And we're going to start with the Bible. I hope I can finish this today. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. Um, with preliminaries, I'm going to try to get into my topic as quickly as I can uh, in order to be able to get through a lot of this because there's Bible I want to get through first. And then I'm going to read you some great historical quotes from Vatican assassins. Now, it goes without saying, and I've said this before, that I don't agree with everything Eric John Phelps says. Okay? Um, wow, look, if you want the paperback, it's $640. Holy buckets. Uh, that's because it's not in print, by the way. But, um, you can go to Vatican Assassins. I think it's vaticanassassins.org. Don't get the free one. I think it's here. Um, yes. I don't agree with everything Eric John Phelps says, okay? We have disagreements. But here, I believe you can buy his book. Or, you know, 24-7 World Radio or something. Uh, anyway, but you can find it. Buy the book. It, it's a digital download. It's worth it. Buy it. Again, I don't agree with everything 100%. I don't with any preacher. You get five preachers in the room, and none of them agree 100%. I don't even agree with myself. Okay? I don't even agree with myself all the time. So, that makes for a weird thing. So, anyway, but I buy that book, support that. It's it's a valuable resource. I'm going to be reading quotes from it today. Many of you can afford it. Most of you can. Don't be don't be a cheapskate. Support people that don't. They're not making money. They're not getting rich. Goodness gracious, they barely can survive. It's like Alan Ives and his music and. Other guys like that. I play this music so you'll buy it. Not, I don't, I'm not selling it. I'm not making anything. 
but people pour out their blood, sweat, and tears to to uh, to do things, and we ought to support people that tell the truth that are you know doing things that are good uh, and and getting the truth out there. Okay, so go buy it and uh, also you know buy some of that music that's out there. I'm gonna buy. Uh, some new albums and and upload them to my playlist and everything like that. So, new albums on the way for sure. Uh, some more music on the way. I just got to get it. I got to get it transferred. So, don't be a cheapskate like Carl. Carl, I am drinking a mixture of cold brew. Made from Costas, I believe. Costa. Costa, not Costas. Costa. And from some hazelnut coffee that I... So, anyway. Good stuff. All right. Anyway, we're going to get to it here. We're going to get into it. Are you ready to get into your Bibles and ready to get into uh learning some things here some important things that are necessary for us to be able to understand what's going on in this jesuit new world order who by the way i'm just gonna get into it all right Okay, I got to find my notes here. Okay, I want you to turn your by. Okay. Let's start with the temple of God. Now. What's going on in Israel? What's going on in Gaza? What's going on in the world? And do I have any scripture to back it up? Yes. I believe that the Pope, who is Antichrist, I'm not saying this final one is the Antichrist. But he is part of that secession of men. The man of sin is not, it is a succession of men. Who call themselves God. Are you with me? Who calls himself God? Let's start there first. The vicar of Christ. Vicar of Christ. A title of the Pope implying his supreme and universal primacy. both of honor and of jurisdiction over the Church of Christ. He says he is a supreme pontiff. Pontifex Maximus. Right? Let's, let's type that in. Okay. Was the chief high priest the College of Pontiffs in ancient Rome? This was the most important position in ancient Roman religion. The word pontiff became terms used for Christian bishops, including the Bishop of Rome. The title Pontifex Maximus was applied to the Roman Catholic Church for the Pope as its chief bishop and appears on all the buildings, monuments, coins of popes. The head of the religion, the head of the mysteries, Pontifex Maximus, the chief devil in charge. 
the chief jabroni. Maximus, Pontifex Maximus, head of the religions. Title conferred onto the Pope from the Caesar. Now, so the Pope says that he is God on earth. When he speaks, he speaks ex cathedra. Papal infallibility. Is a dogma of the Catholic Church which states that in virtue of the promise of Jesus to Peter, the Pope, when he speaks ex cathedra, is preserved from the possibility of error and doctrine initially given to the Apostolic Church and handed down in Scripture and tradition. Liar! Papal supremacy, the doctrine of infallibility. Only one thing is infallible. God, all, one person, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and one book is infallible, the King James Bible. Okay? That's it. But Pontifex Maximus holds to papal infallibility. He is, he is saying that he is the vicar of Christ. He is God on earth when he speaks ex cathedra. Means that he is perfect. Okay? Meaning that he is God. Why is that important? No, it's the Jews. It's the Jews. No, apostate Jews are useful to the Pope. But they are not the one that claims to be God on earth. Old smutty face does. Why does that matter? I'll show you if you be quiet long enough. All right, you ready? Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Count it back nine times. Nine, eight, seven. Do that again. Nine, eight, seven. The seventh time temple of God is used. It is used of the Antichrist. Now pay attention. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. Okay? Except there come a falling away first. That's the apostasy. That's not the taking away of the Lord's church. This is why I hold to a mid-trib or post-trib position in that sense. Because I believe these two things have to take place first. The apostasy. The falling away. And 
that man of sin be revealed. You don't have to agree with me on post-trib right now to learn everything you need to know that I'm about to tell you. You can say, Pastor, I'm pre-trib. And I'm going to be like, cool. I don't care. We're all going to find out when we go up, okay? The point is, pay attention to what's going on. This is going to be your key to why in the world is there a war over there in the first place? Why do I even care as a Bible believer? Why did I just stick my head in the sand like some stupid reformer and act like nothing's going on? That God's done with Israel, God's done with everything over there, and that's just the way it is. Problem is, he's not done with it. That's the thing. Let no man deceive you by any means. I don't care if you're pre-trib, post-trib. I don't care. It doesn't matter to this. Who, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Each pope in each generation claims to be the vicar of Christ. Pontifex Maximus, ex cathedra, God on earth. Okay, the secession of men. who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Everywhere God puts his name, the vicar, Pontifex Maximus, puts his name. Are you following me? Everywhere. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he, as God. Capital G-O-D. You're following me, right? So that he as God, no, this is not a misprint. It's on purpose. He's coming to this temple and he's saying that he is God. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, I do not believe this is, this is um, only spiritual. Like it's not literal. Nope. I don't believe that. No, it's just literal. It's going to be in the mind. Well, it'll probably be there too. With Elon Musk, with uh, with uh, uh, the chip going on, with um, inserting Neuralink into your brain, with uh, the internet. Sure, that's part of it. But there's also a literal temple because there's a literal Israel and there's a literal land and there's a literal Jerusalem. And there's a literal man that says he is God.
And I was warned in verse number three, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And ye, now you know that what withholdeth, that he might re be revealed in his time. What withholdeth? Each pope, each succession of the man of sin always wants to be the one that puts a temple in Jerusalem and sit in it and say that he is God. But they're not allowed to. God does not let them. God hinders them. He does not let them do it. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Till he's removed. And the final one comes. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Who's that wicked? The one that sits in the temple of God saying he is God. That's the wicked. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him. Who's him? The Antichrist. The man that says he's God. Remember, Jesus came and Jesus said that he was God in the flesh. I and my father are one. The wicked is going to come and he's going to say he is God. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. What does that mean? Well, the Antichrist will come in and he'll take the, the kingdom with flatteries the first three and a half years. And then he will be slain like the slain Osiris. And then Satan will fill him after he takes a wound by a sword and doth live. And then Satan will fill him. He will be filled with Satan. Satan entered into him. Satan is going to enter into him like he did Judas. Only two people ever have been stated in the scriptures that Satan entered into him. Who is that? Judas, the man of sin, the son of perdition. And the Pope who will fall, who will be the slain Osiris and be risen. But only it's Satan that will come into him. Satan will enter into him. Right? And he will take the wound, right? Let me go over there. See? This is why I'm not going to get to everything, probably. Woohoo! Revelation 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. 
and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Who is that? He that cometh after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That's him. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. I do, if I have to go into a second one, I am charging time and a half because I, I'm like union or something here. I need time and a half for the second, okay? Look at this, John 13. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Check this out. John chapter 17, verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Second, Second Thessalonians 2, 3. We're back here again. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. He's going to be revealed, the son of perdition. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. They should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, so back to this phrase, temple of God. Nine times. The seventh time, the nine, eight, seven. Is right here. He is the perfect counterfeit that will deceive. He is the perfect counterfeit. Right? To what is going on? Okay. Now, that's the temple of God. We count here one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you have the temple of God listed. Yes, the temple of God is you and I. Yes, the temple of God is stated to be the church. But yes, the temple of God is also stated to be a literal place. It's wherever... It's wherever God's spirit, God put his spirit, wherever he was. And where did God say, who, who owns Jerusalem? You might say the Jews. God owns Jerusalem. It's the city of the great king. Is that David? No, that's Jesus. Jesus owns Jerusalem. That's why the Antichrist is going to come in. 
and try to mock being the savior of the Jews. Why will that happen? Because of this, John 19, 15, but they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. The Jews said they have no king but Caesar. So who is their king? Pontifex Maximus. Who rules the Jews today? The Pope. That's who rules them. The Pope rules the Jews. He is Pontifex Maximus. He is the king of the Jews right now. The usurped title. Okay. Watch this. Matthew 23, 38. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? And you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Forever? No, not forever. For I say unto you, you shall not see me. Who is that? Jesus. You shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Wait, so that's not forever. Well, no, it's not forever. But my John Calvin. But my Ulrich Zwingli, but my reformer said so. Yeah, I don't care what they say. I care what Jesus said. Got these people like, oh, I don't know why everybody's really that worried about what's going on in Israel. I mean, nothing's real. I mean, or then you have the other crowds like, oh, it's the Jews' fault for everything. They're in control of everything. Not according to Jesus. Jesus said, well, your house is left unto you desolate. They don't have a house. Destitute, deprived of inhabitants, desert, uninhabited, denoting either stripped of inhabitants or never having inhabited. Laid waste or ruined. What does that mean? He said he was going to form them again, and when they come back in, they're going to come back in as dead men's bones. They come back in to Jerusalem dead. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They do, don't they? Cold. I got to put my jacket on. Come on. I got a new jacket, man. I actually got it like for half price. Can you believe it? All right. Hang on. It's a new one, Jody. It's not even from a thrift store. I got two of them, actually, and they were half price. One was actually a third of the price they sell in stores. I got this place called dungarees.com. They have a bunch of Carhartt stuff, Timberland Pro stuff, cat stuff, 
all that kind of stuff. Go there. Go to their website. They're stand-up people. No, I'm not advertising for them, and no, I'm not getting paid. <laughs> They're not sponsoring me. <laughs> I'm just happy I got it. And I got my wife one, too, because they were on sale. Anyway. All right. Yeah, very warm. My other ones are wearing out on me, so I had to get some new ones. All right, here we go. Let's go back to this. So this is what Jesus said. Are you following me? Yeah, but but my Rothschilds in the New World Order. Yeah, I know. They're part of it. But the New World Order, like the Illuminati. Illuminati. Carl, Illuminati exposed. Uh, my Illuminati. No, not your Illuminati. Yes, actually, your Illuminati. Your Illuminati is working for the Pope body. Okay? They're the financial arm of the Pope. That's what they are. They're the financial arm of the Pope. I'm going to show you that in some quotes and give you some information of that in a second. But let's just keep following this down. Because I'm having fun with this Bible study, believe it or not. All right. Now let's turn to Matthew chapter 24. You dig? 24. That's right. That's what I said. 24. All right. Now. We're going to read about this here. Well, Betty, you don't live in cold Minnesota. <laughs> and if you're looking for a company that's not gay, you're not going to find one. I guarantee you. I live in frozen Minnesota, and you got to have warm clothes. Otherwise, you're going to freeze. That's the way it works. Anyway, you can do that when you live south, and you can wear a little light jacket whack it. One of them little skinny things that people put on. You wear that here, you'll freeze outside, walking outside. Target's gay, Walmart's gay, Carhartt's gay, Under Armour's gay. They're all queers. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a, uh, I haven't seen, you show me an independent Baptist, God-fearing, holy people that make big, thick sweaters, and I'll be sure to look into them. You can find one for me. You got it. I'll look for it. All right. Here we go. Matthew chapter 24. Okay. And, as, and Jesus said to them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay. So I want you to think about this for a second. So. Here's the thing. Somebody came and destroyed that temple. Who was it? Who came to Jerusalem in AD 70 and destroyed the temple? Here we go. Yep. Oops, that's the wrong one, I think. Herod's temple. The siege of Jerusalem. Titus. A Roman army led by the future emperor Titus. Vespinius. Besieged Jerusalem, the center of Jewish rebel resistance in the Roman province of Judea. 
Three days before Passover, the Roman army started besieging Jerusalem. According to Josephus, a contemporary historian and the main source for the war, the city was ravaged by murder, famine, and cannibalism. They came. They destroyed. Why is it important? Well, because the same people that destroyed the temple, remember, they had no king but Caesar. So who came? Caesar came and destroyed their temple. Okay. Which, which was prophesied about in Matthew 24. See not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? Question number one. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Question number two. And of the end of the world? Question number three. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. What's going on now? Wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, and these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Okay. Look at verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Okay. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. That's an end times temple that is coming before the Lord returns. Part of this has been fulfilled, but not all of it. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Now listen, that if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. This is the Antichrist he's talking about, or other Antichrist. These things haven't happened yet. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. Okay, this abomination that make it desolate. It's the same thing that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2 is talking about. Daniel chapter 11. Verse number 
and arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Hey, Pastor, do you believe that the Jews are going to try and reinstate uh, temple sacrifices? Yes, because they don't believe their Messiah is here. Well, how can you call that the temple of God? Because where it is. And Jesus said it's going to happen. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Hasn't happened yet. Right? Going to happen. Hasn't happened yet. Okay. Now let's turn to Daniel chapter 12. Verse 11. And he said, go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Because this is the end. The time that is being talked about is the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make a desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and three. But go thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Okay. Right. Now. That's till the fullness of the Gentiles come in, right? That's what the Bible says. That hasn't happened yet. Look at Genesis 15. When the Bible speaks of the Jews, okay? When the Bible speaks of the Jews, in Genesis chapter 15, in a prophecy of Abraham, look at this. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Okay. Okay, that's an interesting phrase, isn't it? It show sure is. Now look at Romans chapter 11. Look at verse 25. Paul is instructing on the Jews. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. What's going on now? God is dealing with individual salvation now. Every Jew, every Gentile, every Greek, every barbarian, every Scythian, everyone. God is dealing with personal salvation. 
God is going to deal with the nations again in the end. Israel being one of them. Trying to remember, let me see here. No, nope, I don't think it's in there. Okay. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Nope. Okay. Good. All righty. Did Daniel? Uh, oh, nope. Daniel chapter eight. Daniel chapter 8 and verse number 23 through 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, we're not quite there yet. When the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Well, who's that? Not by his own power. Same one that's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The same one that's in Revelation chapter 13. The Antichrist, who comes in the power of the dragon, or Satan. He's a king. The king of fierce countenance. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace, shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. That's the final battle. That's the end. This is that king of fierce countenance. And he's going to have a temple. So who on earth says he's God? Pontifex Maximus, the vicar of Christ, Pope, papal infallibility. The vicar. implying his supreme and universal primacy, both of honor and jurisdiction over the church of Christ, which is not the church of Christ. It is antichrist. Okay, well, I'm going to take a little bit of a break here with a song and give you a... a um,
a few minutes here to digest some of that. shadows plant my feet on higher ground lift me up above the clouds Lord where thy pure sunshine is found Lift me up above my weakness, lift me up into thy strength, lift me up above the shadow. about one more before we get started because then we're going to get into a lot of heavy quotes and things and really continue i i laid the scriptural argument first obviously and uh, now we will lay the historical argument. well always we scripture then we get historical not that it has the same same weight, it doesn't, but it just kind of backs up. Anywhere 
carry forward in the King's highway to the prize before us, nearer every day. Learning more of Jesus and His holy will, never turning backward, never standing still. Anywhere we forward, forward is the word, and you're not the captain's orders. The moments bring avenues of service for our blessed King. Work for Him is precious, toiling in His might. For His yoke is easy and His burden light. Anywhere we forward, forward is the word. And you not the captain's orders. Amen. Okay, now we're going to get back into it here, and we are going to talk about uh, some historical references from Vatican Assassins that really lays the foundation. Now, in order for you to build a temple, you, you have to have some people that are really, really, really interested doing so. Now, the Hebrew Jewish Israelites are going to be used in that sense to build the temple not physically but they're the people that are going to back it but who can think of a group of people that wants to build Solomon's temple. Who is that that talks about building Solomon's temple? It's not that hard to figure out. They pride themselves on building. They pride themselves on Uh, having everything level. It would be the Masonic Order. The Kabbalistic Masonic Order. Who I maintain work for the Pope. He is the head of the mystery religion. So he is, the, he is that Antichrist that sits ahead of the Masonic Order. He's the top of the pyramid. He is that top of the pyramid. So we're going to read some quotes from Vatican assassins.
Now, Rome has that desire of rebuilding a commercial Babylon on the Euphrates River to build an arm of labor Zionist Israel for the defense of Rome's kingdom of Jerusalem and to host a third Hebrew temple. In the book Eugene in a book Eugene Sue and his enduring masterpiece The Wandering Jew said this Imagine an association whose members having destroyed all ties of family and of country to be singled out from among men and whose force are to be concentrated at last to one united and formidable end Its plan devised and it establishes its dominion by all possible means over all the nations of the earth in establishing a one-world government, right? Be ruled by a risen Jesuit pontiff, Solomon's rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. It's the Jesuits. They have that desire. Nesta Webster in her pro-Jesuit English historian Secret Societies and Subversive Movements said several knights who had set forth to rescue the holy places of Palestine from the Saracens formed an association under the name of Freemasons, thus indicating that their principal desire was the reconstruction of the Temple of Solomon. You know the Knights Templar? Masonic Order? Right? Their design is to do such. That's their work. Another quote here. One of the major victories for the general would be taking of Jerusalem by his Torah despising Masonic Jewish labor Zionists in 1967, paving the way for the rebuilding of Solomon's temple for the devil's infallible Papal Caesar. With every nation now subordinated to the temporal power of the Pope, the Holy Roman American Empire must now be destroyed, for it is the world's haven for heretics and liberals. See, they, they have this desire, and they're going to use the Muslims, by the way. They use the Muslims. They use them to do it, right? To foment the war. To build the temple. Why does Hamas attack Israel? Who owns the Gaza Strip? Well, Jerusalem does. Israel does. Remember, if you go back to the Jesuit order and the co-founder of the Jesuit order, Francis Xavier, his goal was to take the eastern side and build up the eastern side for the Pope. So the purpose of the Jesuit order was to set out to conquer the Far East, particularly Japan. And upon that victory, the Chinese Empire, first came the priests and then came the foreign soldiers in attempting to capture Japan with Francis Xavier arriving in 1549. The Jesuits converted many of the Japanese lord called Deimayo. The sect most subservient to the order was the Choshu clan. Later banished for centuries, the Jesuits then incited them to destroy hundreds of Buddhist temples and slaughter the priests. But it came to pass that the risen son of God would send a Protestant sea captain to the court of the Empire, Emperor Shogun. Having saved William Adams from being crucified by the Jesuits, the Shogun, Ayayasu, held many interviews with the mariner. Then he learned of the order's bloody history, including the extermination of the West Indian races and the Inquisition in Spain. As a result, the Englishman rose to extraordinary favor. See, the Pope wants to build an army. He's got it built. But it's the same playbook that has been used over and over again in every country. What is the goal? 
the Black Pope. There must be a ceaseless agitation and murder justifying more Jesuit medita- mediation intending to secure Jerusalem's Temple Mount for the Antichrist. They are after the Temple Mount and they are going to blow up that mosque. They are going to blow up that mosque and we're and America is probably going to get blamed for it. They want to blow up the mosque. Why? So they can put that temple there. Because they want to revive the Holy Roman Empire. From where? From Solomon's temple. Why? So they can, so he can sit in the temple of God saying he is God. That's why. That's the purpose. The Jews think the purpose is to rebuild the temple to restore their worship. They're being used. To go back to the Cold War. During the Cold War, the foreign policy of the British, American, and Soviet empires would be the Council of Trent installing dictators overtly and covertly loyal to the vicar of Christ. Throughout Central and South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, and the pinnacle of Jesuit power. The order with the Knights of Malta on the island of Malta would formally end the Cold War. This would give the Jesuit-ruled CFR government of the American Empire the justification deceiving the people to close many military installations while further disarming the nation with more gun control, gun confiscation legislation, thereby in re- inviting a race war between whites and blacks, a fasci- anarchy, a fascist dictatorship, death camps, and finally, after the murder of America's Jews, a massive Sino-Soviet Muslim foreign invasion. That's what they want to do. Further, the sons of Loyola would agitate the peoples of the world through American intervention in the private affairs of foreign nations. The assassination of leaders, the mass bombings, military invasion, and economic destruction of civilian population would be the means by which the company, which is the Jesuits, would enslave every nation to its ends, worldwide Jesuit-controlled antichrist tyranny, headed by the King of Kings in Rome. This would cause all the foreign nations of the world to hate Americans and to hate the Jews of America, remembering there have always been prominent CFR Jews in every president's administration. At the right time, the Jesuit general will marshal his militia, bringing a coalition of hostile nations against the defeated American empire, finally destroying the last stronghold of any Protestant reformation or any biblical Christianity And with it, America's Protestant, Baptists, Jews, refugees, pagans, these foreign immigrants having sought to escape the merciless absolutionism of their own nations installed and financed by the Pope's Holy Roman American Empire. The Jesuits will then concentrate on making their infallible papal Caesar the universal despot of the world, ruling from Solomon's rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. You have to understand, they have to rule. From Jerusalem. Who owns the Temple Mount? Pope has control of the Temple Mount. They have to rule. He has to sit in that temple of God saying he is God. Everything's a mockery. But he has to do it. Remember Fat Albert Pike? The Masonic General Fat Albert Pike? Pike also spoke of the individual empire. Who is uh, 
Albert Pike. He was a wicked, vicious, vile man. A wicked, Masonic, murdering devil that tortured soldiers in the Civil War. Grand Wizard, right? Of the Masonic Order, but he was a prophet and he foretold. Why? Because this was the plan. This is the plan. And the Pope is that Antichrist. And what does the Jew, what do the what does the Masonic Order tell you the story of? The capstone. Babylon rising. Hey, preacher. How come we got in God we trust on the dollar bill? How come we got like Novus Order Seclorum? How come we got that stuff on it? What's that got to do with God bless America? And I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. Right? America. Yeah. Cool. I'm some redneck dude singing proud to be an American. How come nobody asks, you know what in the world is that pyramid doing on the back of that dollar bill? How come one of them hillbilly rednecks said, hey, what's that thing doing on the back of a dollar? Like, what? There ain't no pyramids in America. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. How come there's 13 stars on the front of that thing? How come that's all there? Well, I don't know, because, uh... What's that pyramid doing there? What's that, ri what's that Phoenix Rising doing on the other side of that thing? And what's that in God We Trust stuff doing anyway? What's that all about? Uh... Well, let me tell you what that's about. This is Babylon. This is Masonic. This is the Pope. The Antichrist. Whoa! Wait! Wait, look at that pyramid right there. Hey, Carl! What's that doing there? What are the name what the name of cheese and pizza is that thing doing there? What? What is that, Carl? What in the world is that thing? It's there? It's it's right there. No. Oh. It's in Rome. It's right there. Well, it's, it's everywhere. Well, how about that? Well, if that ain't the craziest thing. Yeah, a little bit. 
So, the Great Seal, Manly P. Hall, we could go on and on and on. The Masonic, uh, uh, but I believe goes back to the head of the mysteries, that eyeball on top, the Antichrist, the Capstone, or the Pope. This is Babylon. This is the Phoenix Rising. Yep. Okay. Okay. And, of course, don't forget about Fat Albert Pike. That Masonic wicked devil. Pike also spoke of the Invisible Empire's plan to ignite three world wars. The first to be fought in Europe, preparing the land of Canaan for the Lord's beloved Hebrew Jewish Israelite people. The second to be a continuation preparing the people for the land via the Pope's Night of Malta-led Nazi fascist Masonic labor Zionist Eurasian Jewish Holocaust, which did happen. And the third to be fought in the Middle East involving the destruction of the mosques on Jerusalem's Temple Mount and the rebuilding of Solomon's Temple as well as the ancient commercial treasure city of Babylon. I predicted these things. Okay. Because the Masons are under Roman Catholicism. They're under the papacy. They're a secret order under the papacy. The Knights Templar. Illuminati. All of those things. The Illuminati is what? We've done this over and over again. Adam Weissef started the Bavarian Illuminati. He was a Jesuit working at the Jesuit College. Working for the Pope. Okay. So the Masonic order is under the head of the mysteries. Okay. Remember uh, the, the the different uh, uh, the different things in the Masonic order the the secret words the the what the builder you know the the all, all of the things that are involved in the in the uh, in the Masonic order they're building a temple. By the way, hang on. On. Uh, let's see. I used to have this. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Okay. Yeah, here it is. Now remember, remember the Mormon temple. The Mormon temple. Who built it? Who is the building modeled after? Freemasonry.
These symbols are on the Mormon temple. Huh. Salt Lake City Temple. What in the world's that for? Because that's who they are. Joseph Smith was a high-level Freemason. But the Smith was the liaison from the Jesuit order, betrayed those Indians, murdered those Indians, also was involved with the Mormons, also was involved with, um, I think the SDA, but I can't remember. Don't quote me on that one. I'll check later. Albert Pike Judiciary Square in Washington, D.C. Scottish Rite Temple, Supreme Council, Washington, D.C. They like building temples. The Masonic Order does. Why? Well, they, they're looking for that final temple. Where's that going to be? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Okay. That's what this war is about. And don't be shocked if they don't blow that rock of the dome up. Don't you be shocked if you wake up in the morning, it's like, whoa, they blew the rock of the dome. Listen to this. The atrocities of the Jesuits' Bolshevik revolution. Everybody thinks it was just the Jews with the Bolsheviks. No, it was the Roman Catholic papacy and the Jesuit order that was behind the Bolshevik revolution. The atrocities of the Jesuits' Bolshevik revolution and subsequent inquisition by Jesuit-trained Joseph Stalin will be blamed on the Jews converting the Europeans into unwitting tools of Rome's Third Reich. The Jewish Holocaust will be used to justify Rome's creation of the labor Zionist nation of Israel, paving the way for an even greater burnt offering of Jews as the majority of these descendants of Jacob, due to worldwide anti-Jewish fury, are to be driven from the nations to one geographical location, the land of Canaan being necessary to, the, to that end, England's General Allen Bai will take Jerusalem from the Muslim Turks in 1917, enabling Solomon's Temple to ultimately be rebuilt for the infallible Pope. He is the prince that shall come. Daniel 9, 26. After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off and not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are permanent. Okay. To finance this grand design, the Jesuits must put their privately owned Federal Reserve Bank in place before the crusade begins. That bank must be established in the greatest wealth-producing nation on earth, composed of mostly middle-class, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants and Baptists known for their honest and upright Protestant work ethic. Remember that the order has been expelled from Europe, having taken refuge in the Protestant American and British empires. Its Masonic tools are in place and ready to obediently execute the plan. But there are those in government and high finance within both empires who are not willing to participate. That's why you had the Titanic collapse, that are the, 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 the tragedy of the Titanic. Eric John Phelps writes in his book on the Titanic, 
and shows how the Jesuits and the Masonic Order were behind the Titanic. That was not an accident that was done on purpose. I absolutely believe that the Titanic was sunk on purpose. Because it was about money. Okay. Now, Barry Chomish was a lost Jew that died and went to hell. Unfortunately, Eric John Phelps had been friends with him. But he wrote and told about what was going on in a book called Who Murdered Yitzhak Rabin in 2000 and Save Israel in 2002. And his newest CD he released at that time was called Zion First, the Vatican's New Crusade for Jerusalem. It detailed Rome's quest to make Jerusalem an international city, as advocated by JFK assassin Francis Cardinal Spellman. His exposure of Jesuit trained Knights of Malta, King Juan Carlos of Spain, advising Shimon Perez, the Knight of Malta, Henry Kissinger, and by advising Ariel Sharon, are key points in proving Rome's secret rule over the, both the Labour and Likud political parties. It was Barry who informed the author that Shimon Perez and Yassi Belin deeded the Temple Mount to the Vatican in 1993. A few months later, Rome recognized the nation of Israel to the chagrin of the Arab world. For the black pope considered Israel created and ruled by Jesuit temporal coadjutors since 1948 to be the restored kingdom of Jerusalem of the Pope's Dark Ages, when the Crusading and Bloody Knights Templar also sought to rebuild the Temple of Solomon. They wanted to do it then, but they couldn't. Barry exposed the fact that Rome rules Israel via New York's Council on Foreign Relations, now directed by the Archbishop of the Capital of the World, Edward Cardinal Egan. Because of his imperial works, he now lives in Vancouver. Uh, that was uh, Barry Chamish. Um, anyway, so... He talks about the, the desire to rule through Freemasonry, through the Knights of Malta, through the Illuminati, through Opus Dei, through the Club of Rome. Okay. Here's a question for you that I think is interesting. It doesn't have everything to do with what we're talking about, but it's a side note. He says, Dear Truth Seeker, why did not Papal Caesar Pius XII excommunicate Adolf Hitler as Papal Caesar Pius IX excommunicated Victor, Victor Emmanuel II? Simple. Hitler upheld the, Pope, the Pope's evil temporal power, but Emmanuel destroyed it. Further, like Surratt, Hitler was given the honor of a solemn high requiem mass upon his death. And yet further upon hearing of Hitler's fake death, Adolf Cardinal Bertram, Archbishop of Berlin, ordered all the parish priests of his archdiocese to hold a solemn requiem in memory of the fur and all those members of the Wehrmacht who have fallen in the struggle for our German fatherland and for the Catholic Church in Germany. Okay, more could be said about that. I know that's a side note, but I thought I'd give it. There's so much in history. Listen, we'll go back and talk about these different events at different times. We really will. Because we're going to go back and talk about the Holocaust, Hitler, all these other things. Like, how does that all play into it? How do the... How do high-level Jews play into it? Well, they're, they're stool pigeons. They're wealthy ones, but they're tools in the papal court of Caesar. Yes, they have some riches and power, but they're still tools. They are not the head, they are the tail. That's what God's word says. 
He believes God's word. No, see what happens is people don't see the hidden hand of the Jesuits. They don't see that. All they see is the, the Masonic Jews and the Illuminati Jews and the Jacobins and these others that are working, but they don't see who's above them and controlling them. They don't see it. But who is the Antichrist? Who is sitting in the temple of God saying he is God? Who's the one that calls himself God on earth and uses a, a, a perversion of the scriptures? Who's the one that produces all the Antichrist Bible versions? It's not the Jews. It's the Jesuits. Whose mod modern critical text came from origin? Who produces the Septuagint? Who produces the LXX? Who produced all those? Okay. Where thy temple stood will rise a new building. The terrible tower of Babel will be built again. The Hebrew third temple in Jerusalem desecrated by the abomination of desolation. The Jesuits are simply the Roman army for the earthly sovereignty of the world in the future with the pontiff of Rome for emperor. That's their ideal. It's simply lust of power, of filthy earthly gain, of domination, something like a universal serfdom. With them as masters, that's all they stand for. They, the coming Jesuit Bolsheviks, don't even believe in God. Except the God on earth, sir. Okay, here, here it goes, another quote. The, the connection between the Knights of Malta the Pope and the Jesuit general with his army of Jesuits is a key in understanding the flow of history since 1814. For the Pope's restoration of the Society of Jesus was the capstone of satanic power through which the devil would control all of his secret societies during the 19th and 20th centuries. Never in the history of the world had evil men been so successfully united in purposing to destroy all religious and political liberty. The intended result was to have the papal Caesar ruling the world from Solomon's rebuilt temple in Jerusalem as the theocratic universal monarch of the world. That's why they put in place Fidel Castro, Jesuit trained. The Knights of Malta. That control the CIA, the Pentagon, and everything else. Known as the Community of Zion in France, the Sons of Loyola used their Middle Eastern Napoleonic Wars in attempting to secure Jerusalem in the words of the lying Napoleon for the Jews. As per the ancient dream and quest for Loyola, the society in the name of the Jews, which race they hated and continue to hate to this day, sought to destroy the two Islamic mosques on Jerusalem's ancient Temple Mount. It then desired to build a Masonic Solomon's Temple for the Jews, but, which, but with the secret agenda of fully intending to transform the Temple of God into the Luciferian, Satanic, Egyptian Temple of Set. The momentous transformation would be realized by a future and final Jesuit pontiff turned antichrist. Mortally wounded with the sword, risen from the dead, indwelt by the devil, and causing the mosaic sacrifices and oblations to cease via his personal presence within. This final consummation of the devil's mystery of iniquity, to which the which end the Jesuit order was created and to which end its elders have strained every nerve is none other than the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy 
place. They're, uh, the Spaniard, uh, this is a, um, this is by Eric John Phelps, this poem that he wrote about this. The Spaniard would be of noble birth, who with his order would rule the earth. The shout of its general to each man restore the age of Hildebrand. The Pope's two swords were through this one, unsheathed by Satan against God's son. The Jerusalem temple, his heart's desire. There to place the risen Pope, the world, he'll fire. What is his name that we may know who broke our hearts with wars of woe? Ah, we'll whisper in your ear that dreaded name of yesteryear. Ignatius Loyola, you've heard before. Never forget evermore. The nobility and populace must by all methods be persuaded into a belief that the society was instituted by the particular direction of divine providence, according to the prophecies of the abbot Jacob, that by his means the church, through, though depressed by the attempts of heretics, may be raised again to its primitive luster. Ignatius Loyola, 1540, founder and first Jesuit general. Secrets of the Instructions, Jesuits. Okay, I'm going to read this quote to you. It's a little longer. Let's see. After waiting for nearly 1,000 years to take Jerusalem in possession of the Temple Mount for the rebuilding of Solomon's Temple, the Jesuits' infallible papal Caesar was not about to lose it now. So he saved the nation with Knight of Malta, General Alexander M. Haig Jr. and high-tech American weapons. This was back in the day, in the Cold War, in those times. What was the point of that? What was the purpose of that? Prepare for the temple. They want temple. One of the reasons why President Kennedy died because he went against the Pope. He was a Catholic. No, he wasn't born again. He died and went to hell. But he was a Catholic that turned on the Pope. All these acts of President Kennedy were proper assertions of national sovereignty and therefore infringed on the Pope's temporal power, power as the infallible vicar of Christ and thus the theocratic universal monarch of the world. The Pope, through the religious, political, and financial power of the Jesuit order, fully intended then and now to ultimately rule all nations through his loyal kings and dictators from Solomon's rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. For when the Pope is crowned during his coronation, these words, among others, having never been taught to us in public schools, were, are spoken. Here's what's said about the Pope, or said at the Pope at his coronation. Take thou the tiara adorned with the triple crown and know that thou art the father of princes and kings and art the governor of the world. St. Thomas Aquinas, the so-called Rome, so-called angelic doctor and favorite theologian of the Jesuit order, wrote in his Summa Theologica in 1272, the Pope, by divine right, has spiritual and temporal power as supreme king of the world. He calls himself the king of kings. Here's another quote. Meanwhile, the Jesuits with their American dictators, inter internal police, the Federal Emergency Management, Management Agency, FEMA, now having been incorporated in the Pope's Office of Homeland Security or Homeland Security, and foreign invaders are extirpating an execrable race of American heretics and liberals. The European nations will be driven to lay down their historic differences and unify. 
The unification will restore the Holy Roman Empire, for which reason the Jesuits are rapidly rebuilding Berlin. When the smoke clears, China will control the east, Russia will control the north, and a unified Roman Catholic Europe will control the west. Further, the Jesuit General's international intelligence community overseeing the United Nations while controlling Israel's Masonic Jewish labor Zionists through the CIA and Mossad will see to it that Jerusalem is declared to be an international UN city with Solomon's rebuilt temple in her midst. This third temple will be built by the International Brotherhood of 33rd Degree Freemasons, the modern-day Knights Templars, many of which have feigned themselves to be the descendants of the House of David through King Solomon, or James, the half-brother of the Messiah. Messiah's name being salvation, according to Isaiah 62, 11. Despite Rome's destruction of all legitimate ge ge genealogical records within Herod's temple, 70 A.D., who destroyed Rome, Papal Caesar. Who wants the new temple built? The man sitting in the temple of God saying he is God. The Six-Day War, engineered by the Knights of Malta, specifically James Jesus Angelton, and facilitated by the Free Masonic Knights Templar, specifically Lyndon B. Johnson, had one primary purpose, the taking of Jerusalem from Islamic Jordan, secretly abated by Free Masonic King Hussein, along with the Temple Mount. The apparent lack of military hardware on the part of Israel provoked the planned attack by Egypt. Therefore, Israel launched a preemptive strike, and in six days, the holy city was in the hands of Rome's CFR-controlled Masonic labor Zionist government. And yet, to the outrage of Jerusalem Jews, victorious General Moshe Dayan gave the Temple Mount over to Muslim control within 24 hours. When the Dome of the Rock comes down, it must be under Muslim and not Israeli control. Within, with no provoked war, there would have been no Israeli surprise attack. With no Israeli attack, the labor Zionist-led army controlled by the order CIA Mossad would never have taken Jerusalem. With Jerusalem inside the border of Jordan and thus in Arabian hands, the high CFR-ruled Masonic Jewish labor Zionist advised by Jewish CFR Illuminus Bilderberg Trilateralist Jewish labor Zionist advised by the CIA Assad KJB operative, the Knight of Malta, Henry Kissinger. Could never realize the ancient Templar dream of rebuilding Solomon's temple. Unbeknown to the risen son of God's beloved Hebrew Jewish Israelite people living throughout the nation, a key scriptural foundation was then laid for the company's infallible papal Caesar, who when risen from the dead will be a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences. He shall speak great words against the Most High. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers nor the desire of women nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all. That's what he's going to do. Now stand in the holy place. Revelation 11, 1, 2. And there was given to me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be trod underfoot forty and two months. I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred threescore days clothed in sackcloth. But the motive of the Pope's present-day crusading knights Templars 
commercially, the great men of the earth in Revelation 18 does not end merely with the assassination of JFK over the issue of Israeli nuclear weaponry. Israel must have the Samson option, but for what real and secret reason was she given these weapons? It must be perceived that an attempt to push the Jews into the sea will result in aerial nuclear attacks throughout the Middle Eastern Muslim nations and therefore will act as a deterrent, at least an apparent deterrent. But since we know, and I believe this, by the way, I believe this wholeheartedly, this statement. But since we know there is no such thing as airborne nuclear war, the dropping of air-bursting nuclear bombs of which the occult Jesuit masters within the CIA Mossad are fully aware, then why construct nuclear devices in Demona? What is the secret but true policy of Rome concerning the intended reason for their use apart from a show of intimidation? As in the U.S., pre-placed nukes have been planted within Muslim nations, but to what end? Could it be that a series of pre-positioned nukes in Iraq, Iran, and Saudi Arabia are to be detonated on predetermined dates in accordance with the secret Jesuit agenda? The answer lies in the Vatican's secret quest to rebuild the ancient city of Babylon on the Euphrates River. This was the true reason behind the Jesuits using their British and American empires to begin 19th century archaeology excavations in the Mesopotamian Valley, to dismember the Islamic Ottoman Empire via World War I, to erect Islamic Freemasons commissioned to rule Iraq, including Saddam Hussein, and to extend the Black Pope's War on Terror into Iraq and Iran. The, con the consummation of this American-led new third, third, 30 years war will be the destruction of hundreds of mosques, the genocide of millions of Muslims hating Israel, the restored kingdom of Jerusalem, the devil's secret centerpiece of his Vatican Empire, and the construction of what will be the 21st century's grand emporium. The Pope's Masonic Jewish labor Zionists will play no insignificant part. They'll be a part of it. There's a literal restoration of a Babylon on the Euphrates. I'm not going to go through and read all that. There's a lot. Man, I ain't got time. I'm running out of time. But yes, the Rothschilds are a part of it. Yes, the Rockefellers are a part of it. Yes, all of them are a part of it. Oh, my goodness. I'm out of time. There's so many connections. Kaiser Wilhelm II, the restore of the Jesuits into Rome, later into Germany, the silent partner, participant in the order's Masonic Young Turks, Muslim-led Armenian genocide in 1915, and the destroyer of the Bismarck's Protestant Second Reich was a tool of the order in beginning its quest for the rebuilding of Babylon. Some 600 miles of the Antolo Anatolian or Euphradian line have already been opened to traffic. In short, there is a general impression that this region, the highway between Asia and Europe and contiguous to Africa, is about to become a great commercial center of gravity. The new Turkish government, in contrast to the old regime, Jewish capital and energy could render that direction in that direction. Rothschilds very recently, therefore, they engage the services, the recreation. Of Chaldea. Rothschilds were part of that. All of them are a part of it. But this plan is centuries old. It's not new. It's been laid out for years. Thousands of years. For the Pope, the final one, Petrus Romanus, possibly. Sit in the temple of God, saying he is God, because if a king, a spiritual king, rules from Jerusalem, what happens? Well, that's. That's like God. Only the new Jerusalem is going to come down and God's going to rule and reign Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But first, that Antichrist will come. 
and the beast system is in place for him to. You capiche? Huh? Man. That quote is huge. Okay. And that's another good one. Unum sanctum. The deification of the Pope. What's it for? I gotta stop sometime. I gotta make some pancakes and eat some. I'm having pancakes for supper. Pancakes, eggs, bacon. I gotta get down there and cook pretty soon. Out my big griddle. The anti-society of Jesus, the company of Jesus, the Jesuits presently ruling the world through the papacy, including the Pope of its making, the Roman hierarchy. It's several orders, both military and religious of the Roman Catholic Institute. Institutions, a cult Freemasonry, the Illuminati, the Sabatine Frankist, the Masonic Jewish labor Zionist, Masonic Muslims, the Sunni, the Shiite, and the Wahhabi along with a host of subordinate Egyptian, Gnostic, Hermetic, secret societies having penetrated all church-state religions, encompassing one grand international satanic conspiracy to culminate in a world government to be ruled by Satan through a final and last pope, murdered, risen from the dead, and indwelt by Satan, ruling the world from the future international city of Jerusalem within a new temple of Solomon, the third Hebrew temple, this beast, the Antichrist will also rule the world's politics and commerce from the treasure city of ancient Babylon, yet to be built after the Pope's present crusade against the Islamic people, as well as against the historic white British and American Protestant peoples, once having composed the Jesuit society's greatest enemy. In accordance with the company's Counter-Reformation Council of Trent in the bloody fourth vow known in the history as the Jesuit Oath, the Monita Secreta. Okay. Go. So, by the way, we are going to talk about the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. How that is a Jesuit forgery blamed on the Jews. Just like Hitler didn't write me and Kampf. I struggle. See, if I was alive, I would have made fun of Hitler and I would have put me in Kampf. My struggle. And I would have added with pooping just to make him mad. Anyway, sorry. I had to do that. Uh, all right, I'm moving on. We're going to talk about how that's a forgery and all the Jesuits' forgeries. Because Rome has a bunch of forgeries out there. We'll talk about them in one broadcast. For 1999, 99, 99. Inflation, throw in another 99. Okay. See if there's any more. I got to get out of here. It's hey, it's past. Look, I'm done. It's past. Um... Wow. I'm just making sure I didn't miss any really good ones. Oh, I like this one and I agree with it. Wow, I didn't know this. The Society of Jesus in control of the world's major universities and thus the sciences would continue its attack on the inerrancy of the Protestant Reformation's final authority of faith and practice with the Bible teaching geocentricity. I know that. That the earth is stationary and therefore cannot be moved while the sun orbits around the earth traveling in its on its daily circuit 
both the order and the craft would use their corrupted form of astronomy for both the opposite. For, for Tycho Brahe, a Danish Protestant and a foremost geocentric astronomer of the 16th century, was given the order's poison cup in 1564 by his heliocentric assistant student, Johann, Johannes Kepler, whose uncle was a Jesuit. The satanic sun-worshipping doctrine of heliocentricity that the earth rotates on its axis while revolving around the sun would continue to be forced down the throat of the world scientific community using one of the Pope's court Jews, the Masonic Jewish Zionist Albert Einstein, who openly advocated the rebuilding of Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. There you go. That one was free. Didn't cost you anything for that. Okay. All right. I'm not kidding now, guys. I got to stop. For real now. It's uh, it's getting gooder though. Wow. Listen to this quote. The vicar of this was 467 to 1648 during that time period. This vicar of Christ organized great holy wars called crusades. The foremost purpose of these wicked and murderous crusades was to take Jerusalem from the Muslims thereby enabling the builders of Rome's pagan cathedrals to rebuild King Solomon's temple. This has been Rome's secret aim for centuries as the popes have desired universal worship while ruling the world from Jerusalem, but the Crusades failed to secure Jerusalem for the Pope. They did succeed in murdering hundreds of thousands of heretics known as Jews, Muslims, and Roman, non-Roman Catholics, Orthodox Christians. The sacking of Constantinople and the butchery inside the Dome of the Rock are but two examples of papal bloodlust. Okay. Oh, this is good. Okay. This goes back to the second temple in Titus. Listen to this quickly. Thus, the biblical explanation of the present plight of the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is clear. The destruction of Jerusalem, along with its second temple by the Roman legions of General Titus, the fifth king or Roman Caesar of Revelation 17.10, occurred in 70 AD. Due to Israel's breaking of the conditional Mosaic covenant, which includes the rejection of that prophet, Jesus the Messiah, national Israel composed of the Hebrew Jewish race, has been the tale of all nations scattered and persecuted by the ruling and rich Gentiles throughout the world as foretold by Moses the prophet. Somberly moved by the Holy Spirit of God, Moses wrote, Moses talks about what happened. I didn't really get into this, but there's so much. Of the seven. I think that's in Daniel. Here it is. The beast that thou sawest was, it is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Look at this one, Revelation 17, 11. The beast that was, it is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Right?
Okay, thus the Vatican opened, but false policy was to end the Cold War while it's secret, but true policy was to continue that most successful of inquisitions in making the risen vicar of Christ the theocratic, theocratic universal monarch of the world enthroned in Jerusalem's rebuilt temple as that man of sin. Goal is rebuild the temple. Ah, okay. I'm almost done. Hey, remember, I got to go preach in three hours too. As we shall see Rome's present quest for an international fascist, fascist, socialist, communist police state is the same policy of the Jesuit, Jesuit General's Holy Alliance. That policy of no religious freedom, no political freedom, has been continued via the Black Pope's international intelligence community, which, which, with its global international banking system managed by the Pope's Knights of Malta, laundering trillions of dollars and ill-gotten gain, having been criminally generated by the Jesuit General's mafia-aided international drug trade, is then financing, managing, and directing the Jesuit General's diabolical and merciless global terrorist network. It includes Fidel Castro of Cuba, Jerry Adams of the IRA, the supposedly captured Saddam Hussein of Iraq, the recently poisoned Yasser Arafat of the PLO, having secretly worked with Zionist Israel's Jesuit-trained Foreign Minister Shimon Peres in continuing the Palestinian agitation for the benefit of the papacy and its ultimate possession of Jerusalem's Temple Mount. And Saudi Arabia's Osama bin Laden, who now has been declared to be dead by the FBI's chief of counterterrorism, Dale Watson. All part of the plan. Satan's great dream is to be like the Most High, the Lord Jesus Christ, with an insatiable desire he craves to be worshipped by all nations in Jerusalem as he sits on his throne inside Solomon's rebuilt temple. Jealousy ruling his office of the papacy for the last 1,700 years, he intends to indwell a resurrected pope whose mortal wound was healed and then to become the eighth Roman king called the Beast. Using the militia of the Jesuit general in control of the Pope and his hierarchy, it is to evil, it is this evil end that he actively works every political event under his immediate control. Satan wants to sit. Remember, he said, I will be like the most high. Part of the plan. How about this one? This is important. Let's see. Heinrich Heimler would be aided in his escape via the Order's British SIS and Masonic King Gustav V of Sweden, while others would be spirited in the Middle East. Franciscan-led Croatian, oh, oh Croatian, Eustachi leader Ante Pavlik would be protected by Francisco Franco, the Roman Catholic Freemason and Jesuit-protected dictator of Spain, whose successor would be another Knight of Malta, Jesuit-trained King Juan Carlos of Old Bourbon Dynasty. Carlos is now negotiating with Israel's Zionist leaders, pursuant to his title as King and Protector of Jerusalem, which includes the Temple Mount. The Old Kingdom of Jerusalem appended to, appended to the Pope's Old Holy Roman Empire composed nearly the same landmass as does Israel today. The cream of the Nazi crop, the SS... Uh, would be brought into the empire of the 14th Amendment America to enjoy the protection of Cardinal Spellman, CIA, FBI, overseen by the American branch of Knights of Malta. How do I know that's true, what he's saying? Well, because Operation Paperclip, all those Nazis and all those other Nazis that were working, high-level Nazis that were working there became U.S. government agents. Okay. All right, one more fun one here, and I think I'll be done. Jesuits' control of the Masonic FBI through brother J. Edgar Hoover and the Masonic Mafia through its commission, one of its members being Frank Costello, 
who frequented New York's Stork Club, as did the FBI director, were virtually unchallenged in 1946. In control of both the American government and organized crime, the Jesuits would create the United Nations and the Cold War with their Masonic tools, Dirty Harry Truman and Smokin' Winston Churchill. Why? To carry out the Jesuit oath in fulfilling the Council of Trent, restoring the temporal power of the Pope around the world, create labor Zionist Israel for the purpose of rebuilding Solomon's temple in the midst of millions of Muslim fanatics and ultimately attempt the final mass murder of the Jewish race. For if the Holy Seed, the physical descendants of the sons of Jacob, including the tribe of Manasseh, Ephraim, being another name for the tribe of Joseph, can be destroyed, its Messiah would have no descendants of Jacob over which to reign. The Pope's bloodlust. Okay. Anyway. There were a lot of players that were involved in that Temple of Mount. There's a lot of players that were involved. All of them. All right, everybody. Well, God bless you. I'm going to get going here. I got to go to church here tonight. I got to preach for another another hour here tonight. So I've been on for two hour, over two hours. So anyway, uh, God bless you all. Pray for us. If you want to join the preaching tonight, it will be on sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley. You can join that tonight, or you can go to Rumble right here on Rumble. You can listen at 7.45 p.m. Central. That's about uh, three and a half hours away. Okay? Uh, now, if you'd like to donate to our ministry, please do. We could always use the help. Uh, you can uh, give on our website, oldpazbaptistchurch.org. Scroll down, support our ministry, PayPal, Venmo, or Apple Pay. Uh, or you can just PayPal us at salvationpreacher at gmail.com. Or you can go to the bottom of the page. You can mail something to 1030 South Highway 3, Northfield, Minnesota, 55057. All right, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, pray for us. We'll see you back here, Lord willing, on Friday. And then Saturday morning, we'll be going out early because the parade is a day parade. So we'll be preaching during the day Saturday morning. All right? All right, everybody. Uh, God bless you. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.